Hello. Today, I would like to show how to charge the 18650 lithium ion battery and how to use it safely. First of all, let me briefly explain the 18650 battery. It refers to a cylindrical battery with a diameter of 18 mm and a height of 65 mm. The 18650 battery is charged and discharged by the flow of lithium ions. It moves from positive to negative when charging, and reverses when discharging. The output voltage is usually 3.7 volts, and the capacity is in the range of 1500 to 3500 milliamp hours. Here, milliamp hour is a unit corresponding to the amount of current that can be output continuously for one hour. There are battery types that do not have a built-in protection circuit as this one, but there are also ones with built-in protection circuits. The battery with built-in protection circuit is slightly longer than 65 mm due to the protection circuit, so you need to check whether it fits in the product you are trying to use. Now let's take a look at how to charge the 18650. When you search for charging of 18650 battery, the charging profile is presented in two stages as below. The first stage is the CC stage, where the current is kept constant, and the voltage gradually rises. The second stage is the CV stage, and in this stage, the purpose is to keep the voltage constant, and charging is completed at this stage. One thing to note here is that the amount of current supplied from the CC stage should be limited to less than 0.5 C, that is, less than half the capacity. For example, if you charge a battery with 2000 mAh capacity, the maximum charge current should be limited to 1 A. Also, the maximum voltage at the CV stage should be managed below 4.2 volts. If this is not observed, the battery life may be shortened or even explode, so be careful. You can achieve this charging profile, by limiting the amount of current supplied to the battery. You can use the TP4056 module shown here or a regulator with CC, CV function such as this, with your own protection circuit. For now, let's first look at the TP4056 module. This module limits current and voltage during charging, and has a function to prevent overcharging and overdischarging, so it is essential to use it in the case of an unprotected battery. There are plus and minus pins for power supply, through which you can directly apply voltage between 4 to 8 volts, and also power can be supplied through the USB port. There are B plus and B minus pins for battery connection, and out plus and out minus pins for load connection. This module consists of three ICs, the part inside the green box is the TP4056, which generates a 4.2 volts fixed voltage and outputs a constant current that can be adjusted according to R-PROG. By default, R-PROG value is 1.2 kilo ohms which sets the module output up to 1A. In addition, to prevent overcharging, there is a function to cut off when the current amount falls below one-tenth of the set maximum current, that is, less than 100 mA. DW01A in the yellow box is a battery protection IC that detects the voltage of the battery and sends out overcharge and overdischarge blocking signals at 4.3 volts and 2.4 volts respectively, to the 8205A MOSFET for battery protection. Also refer to the schematic of TP4056 module. For reference, R4 here is labeled R6 in my module. Then, let's start charging. While charging, the checkpoint is, whether the charging is done according to the charging profile of lithium ion, and whether the charging is cut off at a current of 100 mA or less to prevent overcharging. The configuration I used for charging is as follows. You can connect the TP4056 directly to the 18650, but for voltage and current monitoring, I connected it to the positive pole through the VIN plus and VIN minus pin of the INA219. The voltage current value read from INA 219 th through I2C is transmitted to the computer through the serial port of Arduino Nano, and is also displayed on the OLED display. Now, let's actually charge the circuit with this configuration. Here, the 18650 battery is configured to be connected through INA 219 at the B plus B minus port of the TP4056 module. Then, let's connect the power. As soon as the power is connected, you can see the red LED of the TP4056 module turned on, and as you can see through the OLED display here, the current is flowing to the battery. I will leave it until charging is complete. Now it seems charging is complete. The red LED in my TP4056 module turned off, 
and in turn, the blue LED turned on, indicating that the charging is complete. The voltage became about 4.1 volts, and the current ceased to flow, so it seems that the overcharge protection of TP4056 has activated. Then, let's see how the charging is done, by plotting the voltage and current value acquired from the serial monitor, and see whether the charging is done according to the recommended charge profile. Here is the plot. The voltage seems to increase slowly, but the current peaks at the beginning and then gradually decreases, showing a graph that does not really appear to match the constant current of the charging profile. But, as long as the current hasn't exceeded 1 ampere, I don't think it would be a problem. Taking a closer look at the current, it was cut off at 100 mA, which matches the description in the data sheet of TP4056. The overcharge protection seems to function as described. So, how about the overdischarge protection? The circuit composition to be used for discharge is as follows. First, the cathode of the 18650 battery was connected to VIN plus, and the VIN minus pin was connected to the B plus pin of the TP4056. By connecting like this, the current will have a positive value during discharge. In addition, a 10 ohm resistor is connected to the out plus out minus pins of TP4056 to discharge. Note that if the wattage of the resistance is not sufficient, the resistor may burn out. The checkpoint of this discharge test is, to see if the discharge is stopped at 2.4 volts as described. This is the configuration for the discharge test. When connected to a resistor, current flows and discharge begins. Now then, I'll leave it until the battery is fully discharged. Discharge seems to be complete as the current is 0 mA. Then, let's check what happened during the discharge. As the discharge starts, you can see the voltage and current gradually decrease. Then, at some point, you can see that the over-discharge protection circuit operates and the cutoff recovery is repeated. Let's take a closer look at this part. The current is cut off at about 230 milliamperes, and the voltage seems to be cut off at about 2.6 volts. However, one thing we should note here is that the cutoff voltage of DW01A battery protection IC is 2.4 volts, but in this experiment it was cut off at 2.6 volts. Maybe we could have missed it due to the high current and long measurement intervals. So, I changed the load to 170 ohms and the measurement interval to 0.5 seconds to check the discharge voltage in more detail. And this is the result. If you look at this picture, the current is about 15 mA and gradually decreasing, and you can see that the cutoff is made in this part. If you take a closer look on the voltage at this time, you can see that it operated as expected at about 2.4 volts. Another thing to note here is that the over-discharge voltage is 2.4 volts, not 3.0 volts. Of course, if you are using a battery that allows usage below 2.4 volts, it won't be a problem. But in general, this is not a desired case. So what can be done? Let's look at the circuit of the TP4056 module that we saw earlier. Here, the DW01A IC is designed to cut off when the voltage input to the VCC pin falls below 2.4 volts. After a few internet searches, I found two interesting methods that were suggested. The first method is to add 400 ohms here at the position of C2. If you use this method, the voltage input to B plus is divided, and when 3 volts is input to B plus, 2.4 volts is applied to the VCC pin of DW01A, and overdischarge will be activated. However, this method is not recommended because 400 ohms causes continuous current consumption. The second way is to connect a diode in series with R5. Since the diode has a voltage drop of about 0.7 volts in the forward direction, it is expected that the voltage will be cut off at around 3.1 volts. Let's test it this way. I put a diode next to R5 as seen in the circuit here. And this is the result. You can see that the discharge voltage has risen from 2.4 volts to 2.9 volts. Not exact, but it seems to work. Of course, you can use it like this, but it's quite inconvenient. I've also done a similar test with the battery that has a built-in protection circuit. This is the charge result with CC CV regulator with the current limited to 1.5A, since my battery has a capacity of 3000 mAh. You can see, it shows a similar profile to the charge profile to when we use TP4056. And at the right end of the curve, 
you can see that even though the current is less than 100 mA, it is not cutting off and charging continues. So I raised the supply voltage to 5 volts, but instead of cutting off, the charging current increased to several hundred mA, which is very undesirable. The overcharge protection seemed to not work properly. Of course, using protected batteries from major vendors might show different results, and later on I will share those results as well. And for the discharge, I connected a 10 ohm resistor directly. As you can see, the discharge protection has activated. If you zoom in, the cutoff voltage is about 2.26 volts, which seems to be very low. I would like to assume that this battery is okay for using at such a low voltage, since the protection comes from the built in circuit. However, I couldn't find the specification of this battery, so this is not confirmed. Therefore, I recommend using a protection module such as TP4056 even if you are using a battery with a built in protection circuit. Now let's summarize. The overcharge protection condition of the TP4056 module is when a current of less than 100 mA flows. The over discharge voltage is 2.4 volts. If you don't like this, you can increase the over discharge protection voltage to about 3 volts by adding a diode, but this is a cumbersome way to achieve this goal. So try to find a protection module with a discharge protection voltage of 3 volts, if you find it necessary. In the case of a battery with a built-in protection circuit, it is unclear whether the overcharge, overdischarge prevention function is operating normally. So, I would like to conclude with the following. First, make sure your battery is safe to use with your battery protection module. Second, don't rely too much on the protection function of your battery. Third, it is safe to use battery protection module in most cases. Thank you for watching this video, and if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a note below this video. Have a good day.